This is our uh, post-op uh, IM placement. Uh, what you can actually see is there's an IM pin that goes through here to make sure that it's good and lined up. And then we have four pins going through it that are actually gonna leave it there. Once the, uh, the bone has actually been lined up, then we'll take this pin here and we'll remove it and it'll actually leave these bones straight. It's one of the, uh, we call it a retrograde, um, a retrograde placement, so we can actually line the bones up before we pin them. Okay, here the IM pin is removed. Okay, and once the IM pin is removed, then there may be a little bit of slope here, which you can see, but for the most part, the bones are touching and lined up pretty well, and uh, this should heal up fine. Uh, go to the next shots now. Or actually, maybe I can do this and hold the camera. Da, 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 da. There you go. All right, so here's our other view. What I want you guys to notice is today the big issue is not so much this bone, this bone here that is healed, but the damage that is done in this area that we're fixing today. So if we're looking at both these, you can actually see some pathology and there's definitely some, some bruising. That's a much smaller space than should be compared to this side over here. So what's gonna happen is this is probably going to be arthritic. We could actually predict that but at the time it was working fine. So we'll go to the next set of x-rays. All right, here we are a week post-op. You really can't see it too well, but there's some fuzziness right there on the ends of those bone, which actually is a sign of healing. And if I can flip this over here and go to the next view. All right, there we are. You can actually see where the bone is widening right here and where the calcium is actually starting to bridge the gap between the fracture. So there is actually some good, good normal healing going on right there. And again, looking up here, comparing these sides, it turns out that that's a normal femoral head and neck. And over here, it is a little bit on the smaller side. I'm not seeing any obvious fractures in there, but it's uh, it's very possible there was some soft tissue damage that's causing that to, uh, to it's an apple core appearance. Anyway, so with that in mind, uh, we'll go to the next set of x-rays. Here's the next set, approximately two weeks after that one. The last set, you can actually still see some bridging, although not as much bridging in this area here. Maybe there's a lot of movement going on. And then backing up here, actually from this view, it looks like we're actually, oops, we're actually seeing a whole lot more bridging, but there's still there's, there's that one line going to the center. So that's not too good. What'll happen is if this dog if this dog is bearing weight, okay, on that leg and moving too much, that piece of bone, these are just pieces of metal that are stainless steel. Stainless steel is not spring steel, and it does give a little, so there's micro movement. So if there's micro movement going on, that's where those bone pieces are getting crunched and, and not allowed to heal properly. So if there's too much movement, we see this happening. So at this point in time, we were obviously advising this client to keep the dog a little bit more confined. Here we are again. This x-ray is about two weeks later than the last one you just looked at. You can actually see that line. If the dog is being kept still, that line is starting to close between there and the bone is bridging. And that's what that view looks like. Let's go to the next one. And on the next one, we'll notice here that that line is starting to bridge and this is getting wider and all that's doing fine. Again, notice that up here, that is just not a normal looking femoral head. So chances are in the future, like that's today, we had to go ahead and remove this. Another two weeks later, you can see the bone starting to consolidate. The line going through the bone is a lot less evident at this point in time. You can actually see the cortices starting to mend there on both sides. And now let's go to the next view and let's see what that shows us. Another one of the same views. Oh, there we go. And on here, you can actually see a starter bridge and the black line that's going through there is missing altogether. That still looks a little funky. And up here where the femoral head is, that even looks funkier. All right, so, okay. It's the last set of x-rays before today and you can actually see the cortices are doing fine. That's actually healed completely almost. Uh, I'm sure after this, the pins are removed. Actually, the cortices actually here have done as well. The femoral head in this area is not normal, but you can actually see where it's connected and there's a little thin area right there. So today, what we did was actually went in, where is the tip of that thing on this picture? There we go. The osteotome went in that direction right there, through to there, cut that off completely. 
And then we removed this piece of bone right there, which I just took some pictures of. And uh, all right, that's how an FHO works. These pins are already gone. So this dog should be walking pretty normally in about uh, within a week. Okay, this is the femoral head that just came out of an FHO, which stands for femoral head osteectomy. Um, osteectomy means we remove a bone, okay? Or ectomy means that, osteo means bone, ectomy means to remove. Uh, this here is the capital ligament, okay, that is inside the coxofemoral joint. We roll it over here. You can actually see part of where this was cut. Um, it turns out that this particular dog was hit by a car. I think this was over a year ago. Um, and I'd actually come in and repaired the femur on this, this the left, uh, the left femoral head, by the way. And the left, uh, the left femur was fractured. So we put in a stage one apparatus, the leg healed fine. Unfortunately, the damage from that car accident probably injured the, uh, the femoral, the, the coxofemoral joint as well. And the actual part of the, the cup here that was in was actually starting to overgrow over this and limit this dog's range of motion and cause quite a bit of pain. That's not cool. So, as of today... We removed this part, so the bone won't grind anymore. If you'll notice, this is uh, there's not a whole lot, not all lot of cartilage around that little area right there. Okay, um, this is almost bone on bone around the side, which is called hibernation. And you can actually see right here some growth in that area where uh, where the ligaments were trying to fuse and limit this dog's range of motion. Um, all right, hold the camera still, Doctor Askew. Um, so anyway, uh, when it comes to doing an FHO, once you dissect your way into down to the the uh, the extra coxofemoral joint yourself, you then take an osteotome, uh, a large flat chisel, and you break it. Uh, and then once it's broke, then you basically have to uh, wrestle all this out of here, cut the uh, the capital ligament, and then cut the angular ligament around it, and then it comes out in this one piece. If you're one of my technicians or you're a new person that works around my hospital. At some point in time, you will always get one of these thrown at you because we end up doing a lot of these surgeries to, uh, to reduce coxofemoral pain. Um, it's a salvage procedure, but it does work. Anyway, so uh, we'll go to the x-rays and we'll explain how that works. Here's our buddy here waking up from anesthesia. There is uh, his incision right there. It's actually about three inches long. And then from there, we actually dissect into the coxofemoral joint and cut off the femoral head. After the procedure, I actually put in a long-acting block in there. Um, as well as some metabolics to prevent any future infections or problems in, as far as that goes because uh, bacteria just fall out of the sky. Anyway, so our buddy here is waking up. Uh, let's go look at some extra surgery. This girl here says she knows someone who wants to work with me and although I really can't fix that at this point in time, I did say that she could have this. Okay, so who's this going out to? Caitlin. Caitlin? Okay, Waits. so Caitlin. Caitlin Waits. Alright, so Caitlin Waits, this is for you, okay? I will tell you, in my 20-something years of learning medicine, I've never actually done this before. One, dedicated a piece of bone over the internet in the YouTube channel, or even given it to a technician in another hospital or even another county. Yeah, Hattiesburg. Hattiesburg, okay, so definitely another county. So anyway, this is yours. You make sure that this girl brings it to you. Oh, also, guys. Single and ready to This mingle. girl needs some action. <laughs> <laughs> You said you wanted a stalker. I'm just making sure it happens. I'm so tired. Okay, so Caitlin, this is yours. You make sure you get it. 